Hello and welcome to the Physio Channel. I'm here with Emma Holly, educator and scar therapist, and Emma's going to show us how you can massage your scar. Thanks, Daniel. So we're using a classic scar down the front of the knee here, as an example you might see after knee replacement. But you can translate these techniques and use them on other scars in other parts of the body. So first of all, it's a really good idea to start off with some dry techniques on your scar, so before you put any cream, gel or massage oil on. The big issues that you can have with scarring is that the scar can want to get a bit stuck and become immobile, which can impact joint function. And it can also feel a bit more uncomfy and swelling can take longer to go down. So first of all, we want to really make sure we mobilise that scar over the underlying tissue. So the first technique I'm going to show you, and I'll practice it and then I'll get Daniel to have a go on himself, is to lay your fingers flat the other side of the scar and move the entire tissue over the underlying tissue. So I'm coming from a lateral aspect medially and just if you think about where the deeper cuts would have been through the muscle and into the joint in this case as we're pretending it's a joint replacement, you're really then mobilising the superficial tissue and stretching everything going down deep. We can go in both directions. A little bit less movement in this direction naturally anyway. And then Daniel, why don't you have a go doing that technique? Okay. So Lovely. I'm starting on the outside of the scar. Yeah. Pulling it over as far as it will go. Exactly. Okay. Now it's important to mention if there is any increase in pain as you do this technique, you're probably going too hard, so ease off on your pressure. You could start a technique like this once you have full new skin over the area, but go a bit more gently when you've got a new scar and then you can gradually build up to being a bit more robust with your movements as your tissue really starts to knit together. Now secondly, we've talked about the fact that particularly after knee replacements, over the patella and, and beneath it, you can get quite a bit of sticking. So the tissue becomes a bit immobile, it's a bit stuck to the tissues beneath it. So what we want to do is increase the lift. So this is going to be a squeezing technique away from the scar, and what you want to see is that scar line popping up. Start above the scar, hold for a second, and release. And just work your way up and down. And if you find one bit is resistant, that it's a bit stuck, it's not about fighting with the body, just on repetition by doing it more and more over a number of days and weeks, hopefully you'll get some improvements. Would you like to have a go at that technique? Okay. So this is an example scar for a knee replacement. Yeah. But can you use these techniques from the video for other scars in other areas of the body? You definitely can. It's more easy for a patient to work on themselves mm. when it's a knee replacement because you can get both hands around the scars more easily. Okay. If you had, let's say, somebody who's had a broken uh, fracture in their wrist and maybe they've got a pin or plate in there and they've got a linear scar on their arm, they'd have to adapt to trying to use those similar techniques with only one hand, for mm. example. Okay. Or you could ask a friend or family member to help you with that as well. How often should I do these techniques if I was doing them on my knee scar like this? Ideally on every scar, it'd be great if people could massage them twice a day. So I tend to say morning and evening is really good. If you've got a scar in an area where if you're sitting or standing, the muscles underneath are contracting, so that might be a scar through the abdomen, for example, if you're stood up, your tummy muscles will be slightly contracted, it's better to do the technique with you totally passive, so when you're lying down. So it tends to be, I say to people, maybe before you get out of bed in the morning, do these nice sort of squeezings and mobilisations, because when you've got contracted muscles underneath, that can impact how easily the tissue moves. Well, you can start with techniques like this once you've no longer got scabs on. So you want to allow a little bit of time for the tissue to knit together and you want to make sure you're not too aggressive when there's been deeper sutures. So anything that's gone beyond the skin so that might have sutures in the diff deeper tissues, allow time for that to knit together before you're too aggressive with it. So you can still do it twice a day, but just be moderate with your pressure. I find most people massage their scars too, too robustly, that they're a little bit aggressive with them, and that isn't always what is best for the scar. 
So the third technique that I'll show you is just literally something you can do with your finger and work along the scar and just get, again, it's all about watching that tissue move, making sure you see the scar line wiggle. That's what we really want to aim for. You can use multiple fingers, but by using a single digit, you actually get more movement in a small area. So you can just work up and down and anywhere you feel is a bit more resistant, just stay there for a little bit longer. Ideally, you should be massaging your scar between a minimum of two minutes up to sort of seven minutes per day, twice a day. And the big question people might say is, shouldn't I be doing this with some oil or cream or gel? And what you'll notice is once, a lot of what I'm trying to do is to get tissue to move on top of the underlying tissue. And the minute you put a lubricant on there or an emollient, you're actually sliding across the surface tissue. So you're less able to grip. So I tend to say, fresh out of the shower, do, do your massage movements, and then it is very important to get that hydration on. You should be putting cream, oil or gel on your scar at least twice a day. We need to really help look after that tissue to help it recover. So it does need some kind of moisturisation, that's really key, but it's not always helpful for when you deliver the massage. We've got some other videos we've been making about how to really enhance functional results. We have, so please have a look at those videos which should be appearing on the screen here. Thanks for watching the Physio channel and we'll see you in the next video.